Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here, walking with you in the scriptures, diving deep into the disciples, Peter, James, and now the third one in the inner circle, the final one, the Apostle John. Apostle meaning sent one, disciple that was dearly loved by Jesus. His name is John. It's not John the Baptist. It's John the brother of James. And so, as we ventured last week, uh, we get to see that James was always connected with his brother John. And so he takes a little bit of the narrative Um, or we've already spoken to a little bit of the narrative of fishermen or who is the greatest in the kingdom. I want to sit on your right and your left. Um, Salome, their mother, uh, asked that question, um, and Jesus taught them what being a servant in the kingdom was all about. But then we get to uh, dive deeper into John. And John, the Gospel of John, he, he makes mention of himself throughout the times of the one whom Jesus loved, or the one who was known by the high priest. Um, And he is very uh, evident, he's very present in the last days of Jesus in Holy Week. So that's why I want you to open up to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. We're going to see John here uh, being the closest to Jesus um, and being used by the disciples to get a little bit of a question answered about what is to come. Because Jesus was being a little bit strange. He was being a little bit strange when he said, hey, let's celebrate the Passover together. Go ahead and get this upper room. But while they were up in this upper room, he started washing their feet. He doesn't do that. A rabbi doesn't do that to its learners. Um, A teacher doesn't do that to um, his servants. Um, The servant does that to the rabbi, to the teacher. And so they're thrown off by that a little bit. And then he starts talking this language of death. He starts talking this language of betrayal. So his disciples are just kind of mixed up a little bit. And so they actually use John and his relationship. And a lot of people think that relationship was the way the one whom Jesus loved because of his youth. And so it was more of a father figure rather than a brother in ministry. Um, And so being a teenager, um, as a lot of people see John, um, he kind of looked up and meant, was mentored by Jesus. Well, we say that always, discipled by Jesus, but, but a more of a present of a father figure, more of one that's going to be um, speaking towards family within John. We'll get that in tomorrow as we look at John at the cross. And so John, in the upper room with Jesus and the disciples, uh, here we are, John chapter 13, verse 18. Jesus said, I am not referring to all of you. I know those of I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. and Whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he has said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And now you get to see this picture, you know, in uh, that, that famous picture of the Lord's Supper. You get to see John hovering and kind of leaning on Jesus. He depicts that well from Scripture here. Um, he was reclining next to him. And Simon Peter mentioned to his this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. <laughs> hey, the one that can't really go wrong. Kind of the, uh, the, the child of the group that just is seen as perfect. Go to him. Ask dad. You know, he'll give you a straight answer. I can't do that because it's kind of this interesting relationship. Simon Peter goes to the one whom Jesus loved and asks him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, John asked, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread He gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as uh, Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly. 
Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. John illustrates a scene that actually scopes the whole of his gospel that he penned, light versus darkness. The light of the world, Jesus Christ, versus the darkness of this world, temptations of Satan and the evil one, and the plot against the kingdom of God. As John asks these questions, it helps us apply to ask the questions of Jesus, of the truth. I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. I need to know who that is. I need to know what's going to happen in the life and in the gospel of Jesus. Are you that same disciple that is kind of nudging John and being like, hey, ask him. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice as a disciple of Christ? Say, ask him what's going to happen into the future here. <laughs> but that's not fully what's meant here. This is the purpose of God. We get to see the kingdom of God coming through, yes, the question of betrayal, but then the fulfillment of betrayal that Judas does. But here we get to see John. And this devotion is to be like John. Leaning, nuzzling up. But really that word, leaning upon Jesus. Or, as it says, leaning back against Jesus. Reclining next to him. I want to be that disciple. I want to be that disciple that's so close to Jesus, reclining safe and just relaxed next to Jesus. I want to be that disciple that when I ask Jesus, I'm actually getting close to him, leaning on him, leaning on his back, and being able to ask him questions, truth questions, revealing questions. And Jesus takes that. Did you see? When John asks that question, he gives him the straight answer. It's the one who's going to dip this bread. And as he dips this bread, he has it, excuse me, to, uh, to Judas. And truth is revealed. It doesn't take long for truth to be revealed of what Jesus said. Are you that disciple? Are you that person of faith that is reclining next to Jesus, relaxing? with him but then also probing him leaning on him with these these hard questions in life it may come in the way of prayer it may come in the way of conversation it may come in the way of actually speaking to one another as brothers and sisters in christ asking the questions of jesus so that he can reveal the truth in our lives as well nobody thought out of out of the 12 they were just kind of bewildered, being said, how could this be? We're so close to him. We've journeyed with him for these last three years. How would we ever betray him? No, I won't betray you. No, I won't deny you. I'll go to my death before I do that, Peter says. But a lot of other people are skeptical of being said, he, he knows full well. And when he says stuff, stuff happens. So who could it be? Let's ask the tough questions. John's asking the tough question in the revelation of Jesus, of what that truth can mean. I pray we do the same. I pray we're so relaxed and comfortable and leaning against Jesus that we can ask the tough questions of God, of his kingdom, of his Savior Jesus for us. Jesus, what are you doing at this time in my life? Reveal it to me. Send me the truth. And where we find that truth is continuing to dig in Scripture, continuing to go in prayer, continuing to be in the community of God, in those places are His revelation, is His truth. He reveals it to John, and He will reveal it to you. Just lean against Him. Lean against His back. Come close to Him. Be comfortable in asking the tough questions of Jesus so that He can reveal the truth. And sometimes it's tough truth. But tough truth is better than false. Light is better than darkness. Jesus is certainly better than the ways of this world or of Satan, as we see. So I want to lean against him. 
I want to be relaxed next to him and ask him the questions of my life. Ask him the questions about my future. Ask him the questions about my discipleship. So that he can just reveal the truth. And part of that prayer and part of that conversation is going to convict us and is going to ask us to be real and genuine and say, give me the truth and help me. Help me to receive that truth with clarity, but also by faith. So are you, are you that disciple like John, the one whom Jesus loved? Yes. <laughs> are you leaning against him, relaxed in his presence to ask him, to talk with him? about the truth of your life and about the truth that he'll reveal for your faith. It's a great insight. It's a great question. It's a great blessing for us to be just close to Jesus, talking with him, walking with him. And we do that all by faith. Have a blessed day walking close to Jesus by faith.